So we're going to talk about phase transitions today. And the best way to transition from different phases. So if you don't know what, if you don't know what I mean by different phases, so people like to structure the training where they do like a peaking phase and everything will be real heavy and neurological and pushing in the direction of like one rep maxes or you know maybe specific rep events or whatever. I'll mainly talk about pushing to one rep maxes though. And then you've got your hypertrophy based phase where people go for the more physiological side of things and they're looking to add some, some muscle size. Uh, and the goal there is to obviously pull back with the neurological stuff, give your CNS a, a full chance to recover whilst adding some good tissue to your frame so that the next time you peak, you're able to transition um, you know, into the heavier weights and basically utilize the new tissue you've gained to hopefully hit more PBs. And I want to talk about like, how phase transitions work and how you guys can maybe watch this video and, and, and help you implement them into your training. Now, the first thing I want to say is, for me personally, I don't really think that you need a hypertrophy block. Uh, and I don't program um, a hypertrophy phase, so to speak. Now and again, I will, because I find that in certain like acute scenarios, they, they fit really well. But for 90% of the time, I don't really put them in there. And what I like to try and do personally is just make sure that hypertrophy is in the program all year round. Uh, because you've got to remember, muscle, muscle tissue comes so slow that to me, it's stupid to only dedicate 10 weeks of the year to it because, you know, what the hell are we going to do the rest of the time? Um, I think that it should be in there all the time, ticking over, because hypertrophy is just something that's like you just slowly add in grains and grains of tissue. And it just takes so long that it has to be an all year round, in my opinion. Now, when you talk about the, these phase transitions, though, the one thing that you need to just remember is that for me, personally, my opinion on strength training is you can only sustain maximal weights for a certain amount of time before you need to pull back. And that's why the kind of common sense thing is, oh, I'll do a hypertrophy block because it just automatically pulls the weight back. But if you're a strong man, you need to approach these training phases and training structures a little differently. So I would say that uh, even in a peaking phase, my athletes always have shoulder stability work in there, which you could just class as upper back hypertrophy if you wanted to. Again, my exercise selection is specifically tailored to, to aim at shoulder stability. So there are exercises and isolation movements in there that are specific to kind of the way I program. But you could just say it's upper back hypertrophy if you wanted to. Um, and then I'll always make sure there's core in there as well. And I always make sure that there's a row and a pull down because a row is to me the opposite of a bench press and it helps the structural balance and a pull down is the opposite of an overhead press. Again, it just helps the structural balance. So there to me are kind of fundamentals that I'll keep in there. Now, I also think that in a peaking phase or in, in an in a off season phase, you should have some you know, elbow extensions, so some tricep push downs or overhead extensions. And you should also have some bicep curls in there because uh, to me, not training your bicep is just ridiculous. Like, the amount of strongmen that don't train the bicep, they train every single other muscle in the body, but they don't train the bicep, which is attached into, like, your delt and uh, into your forearm. If you have a detrained or weak bicep, you've got a high chance of getting elbow niggles, you've got a high chance of getting pinching in your anterior delt. Think of it more as, like, a structural balance thing rather than I want big biceps. It's like all the pressing movements you're doing are helping that tricep grow and get stronger, but then you're just leaving your bicep on the other side just to just flop around. It's like, come on, guys, use some common sense. Get some good structural balance going. So to me, adding in a hypertrophy phase for 10 weeks where you might include bicep curls is stupid, and you should keep it in all year round. So we all know what peaking phases are, I'm sure. I don't need to delve into that. So let's say you've done your peaking phase, and you feel that you're at the point where you need to transition into another phase. Now... I personally wouldn't recommend going into hypertrophy phase. I would tell you to just think outside the box and uh, call it something different and approach it with a different mindset. So let's think about a skill acquisition phase instead. So now you've, you've peaked your log and your dead and all your big static lifts, and now you need, to, you need to detrain yourself neurologically, let your CNS calm down, let yourself recover, get rid of these niggles and stuff, and you want to go into hypertrophy phase. No not as beneficial as going to skill acquisition phase. So now what we can do is we can start to pick events that are low load, so they're not as demanding on the body, but things that you haven't done before uh, or maybe you've not spent a lot of time doing. So uh, bag throw over bar, for example. 
maybe some light atlas stone extensions, maybe even practicing one motions on the atlas stones. Uh, speed yoke, uh, take a look at your times that you're getting on yoke. And um, what I always try and do with athletes is I find, the, I call it the, the threshold. So let's say they're doing nine second run with 200. They're doing a 10 second run with 250. And then they're doing a 15, 16 second run with 300. To me there, the difference between 200 and 250 is about what you'd expect, a second or so. But 250 to 300 is a bit too, bit too much and it's adding seven seconds. So we need to train that yoke around the 260 mark um, to make sure that we're going to get a faster time at the 300 in the future. So now what we can do is we can pick these events and pull them back to low load, drill speed runs. We've got specific goals and outcomes in mind with like the yoke, the bag throw as well. Set yourself a goal of something you want to achieve at the end of the phase. Stone one motions as well. We've got a goal. What other light event could you do? Log skill work. Watch me log videos. Apply the skill of keeping your head back on the push press. And then instead of thinking and going in the gym, thinking about the muscle you're going to gain, you're not thinking about that shit because that's already in the program. You've done it in your peaking phase. You've done your pull downs. You've done your rows. You've done your shoulder stab. You've done your core. You've done some prone ham curls. You've got your back squats in there, whatever, for your leg hypertrophy. That's all in there all year round anyway. Just rotate the exercises when you feel like you've kind of let them dry, but keep the principles the same. And then instead of a hypertrophy phase, you've got a skill acquisition phase, and the background goal is hypertrophy all the time. Now, you've achieved the same thing as a hypertrophy phase. You've let yourself recover from that high neurologically demanding load that you've been putting for yourself on a peaking phase. But you've come out of this phase a better athlete. You've come out with new skills gained. You've come out with um, goals that you've, you've set and hit. So you've got faster on your yokes, etc. Now, when you go out of that phase and transition back into a peaking phase, you are basically in a 10 times better position as a strongman athlete than you would have been if you went away and do what most people do, which is I'm gonna cut the events out for the next three months and I'm gonna do German volume training. Well, guess what? Yes, you've added some tissue, but you've just got good at doing 10 by 10 and you ain't ever gonna do 10 by 10 again. So what the fuck's the point? You may as well make it specific to your sport. Think outside the box. Don't look at these powerlifting fucking miso cycles that they teach in university because it's a lot of shite. Trust me, waste of time. You don't want to put together macro, meso, 10-year cycles. No. Break it down into a specific short block with specific goals and outcomes to your needs for your sport, strong man or strong woman, and then you'll come out of the phase a much better athlete. Now, how do you transition outside of a skill acquisition phase into a uh, peaking phase? Well, basically, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is start... Uh, Instead of focusing on gaining the skill via volume and, and lower weight and repetition, you just start ramping the load slowly. And then you'll end up with what I call a transitional phase, which is where you come out of like a skill acquisition phase and you're going into a peaking block. You don't want to just jump up the weight straight away. You're kind of jumping it up slowly. So that first three weeks uh, from a skill acquisition to a peaking phase, I call a transitional block because you're not quite in the rep ranges where you're gaining loads of skill, but you're not quite heavy enough that you can class it as peaking yet. So it's just kind of this like purgatory, you know, transitional phase. But then it's easy to come out of it because it just naturally flows. And then you'll end up, um, not only will you have gained some good muscle tissue in this time frame, but you'll have got much better skill-wise at these, these events. So when you try to peak them, not only will you have more muscle tissue to work with, but you'll have better execution of the movement patterns that are specific to your sport. So the big takeaway from this video is if you're thinking about doing a hypertrophy phase, make sure you don't take away all the specifics of your sport and just focus on gaining muscle tissue because you will have wasted a long period of time that could have been better spent um, acquiring skill across events you're crap at. Remember, in the skill acquisition phase, you don't have to pick the things you're good at. Pick the things that you never do. Pick the things you're crap at. Look at your last three comps and go, what did I do shit at? Was it front hold? No one likes training front hold, but you can train it in this block. Was it farmer's fucking hold or side hold or some shite? Train that in your slatition phase, and then you won't come last in that event in your next comp. Anyhow, I'm just rambling shite now, honestly, but this will help you. Trust me, if you watch this video, it'll help you. And if you think about doing a hypertrophy block, now you can kick yourself in shin and go, oh, I was about to do German volume training, and now I'm not. And you can thank me in the comments.
MST Bot is the best online strongman program you will find. Not only do we include all the static lifts, like your deadlifts, your log, by the way, guaranteed PB after eight weeks if you run if you run the MST Bot. The first eight weeks, you'll log PB. I guarantee it. Money back, I swear down. You've got nothing to lose, so just click the link below, get your first four weeks free, and welcome to the future of strongman programming.